Hello there, Cancers. Welcome to your weekly Optera reading. So, um, what I'm feeling coming out here, and this is going to serve as your overall spiritual advice, um, a need to look at things in a situation from a different vantage point so that you can come to a clearer understanding as to where you stand in relations to other people, why other people are not um, doing things the way that you would do things, and why your communication overall with another person might be um, contentious or difficult. And so the need to kind of step outside of our shoes, put ourselves in other people's shoes to understand, you know, all the things that they've been through. Um, it's like walking a mile in somebody else's shoes so that you understand the person that they are and how, you know, their life experiences have kind of uh, created the person that they are right now. And I feel like for a lot of you, your ability to sympathize, your ability to empathize and to understand another person is very immense and very, very deep. But I feel like in close interpersonal relationships as well, um, a lot of the times we lose our perspective and a lot of the times to um, our vision of what we want to build together as a relationship, you know, uh, as a unit, um, it might be I guess like it might be colored by our perception of um, what relationship entails, what relation, whether or not relationships are going to last or whether or not we truly believe that relationships are meant to be, you know, f uh, forever. So I feel like there might be some ideological clashes between you and a partner, um, between you and even a business partner or between you and family members based on the um, transient lifestyle that they have led. It's like they've been through a lot of turmoil and hardships in their own lives and they don't see everything as, as permanent and long lasting and it's really hard for them to kind of commit and so it's kind of your, I, I don't want to say your destiny or your responsibility because, you know, they need to find that within themselves. But I almost feel like it is um, in your path to kind of show them that, you know, hey, things are okay. We're in a different environment now. We're, the times are different. So maybe you kind of need to open up. But understanding and have that baseline understanding of wh where the other person has come from, what they have to uh, ward off or contend with in their past and why it creates, you know, this almost like paranoid uh, person that they are, where they don't believe in permanence, where they don't believe in stability. That is really going to help you um, navigate this energy for this week, okay? Um, first of all, in your love relationship sector, um, I have this card about control, okay? This is the Four of Pentacles. Um, and I usually look at this card, um, hanging on to earthly possessions, feeling a little bit paranoid that things are gonna be ripped away from us, feeling um, like we need to cling on to everything that we have. Um, and and, and also, also almost like viewing other people as possessions and almost viewing, it, it's like, being very closed off to the point where we need to be very protective we need to take care of what's ours which is honorable and 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 honestly it's a good trait but overdoing it can be detrimental and i do feel a lot of the element of control when it comes to um, this card clinginess control and wanting things a certain way and I almost feel like, you know, um, attributing our sense of self-esteem with our possessions, with the people that are in our midst. And I usually see it as like, um, you know, the, the person that uh, has like the trophy spouse, the trophy wife, the trophy husband, the eye candy, and that they can parade around town with, uh, with someone who's very, very attractive because they feel like it boosts their self-confidence when onlookers see that there was someone who's very attractive they um they get a big ego boost so it, it's kind of akin to that and in a more um in a lesser sense when it comes to relationships this is trying to control resources trying to cling on to everything because we automatically assume that our sense of self-worth our sense of competence and our sense of um, confidence is greatly linked in with the the people we surround ourselves and the p material possessions that we have in our midst 
And I also feel as well, um, when it comes to arguments, when it comes to dealing with another person that you're romantically involved with, that you're married to, or you know, a significant other, whoever it is, that you're romantically linked up with, this is like not um, being able to see outside of our own vantage point. Like I said earlier, clinging on so strongly to our beliefs that when people um, question our values, question our beliefs, we feel like it's a, an attack on us personally. And so we tend to get a little bit defensive. And a lot of the times, the things that we are very defensive about are things that we know to be true about ourselves. And that's why we, it's, it's like touching a sore spot that we don't want to look at. It's like touching a, um, something we have swept under the rug that somebody is now poking at and it makes us uncomfortable. So if there has been, um, you know, arguments and things like that where a partner has tr has somewhat like triggered or found your soft spot, these are areas that you have to work on rather than getting defensive. Maybe it's time to, you know, uh, say like, let's take a break from this. Let me uh, ruminate over what you have just said. And then I'll come back to you at a later date, you know, um, detaching yourself so that you can do some inner examination and that so you can figure out why these are such trigger topics for you and why issues of control and dominance are playing out in your relationships. I feel like for many of you, it's like either side of the coin, you might be attracting people who are kind of like um, impulsive or they're like um, trying to plan out everything for you in your life. So they might be encroaching, like crossing over your boundaries or um, not respecting your free will. And so you have this defensive stance up all the time regarding a relationship partner where you're trying to maintain your space and you're trying to take control of your own life. And then for others, there's this issue of, you know, control and, and things like that coming in in your relationship that you're exuding towards another partner. Um, the partner that you're dealing with shows up here as a six of swords. This is somebody that has been through hell and back, okay? They've got a really interesting backstory. So if you're dealing with someone that has been through like a lot of tumultuous um, childhood, a lot of uh, um, uh, dealing with, you know, a lot of uh, relocation, moving from one place to the next, they've never had a place where they can call home. They've never had a place or um, a, a family or even like a love relationship that accepts them for who they are. And I feel like this is a partner that has been through so much in their own lives that it's hard for them to believe in love. It's hard for them to believe in, you know, um, soulmates and stability and um, even, you know, permanence, okay? I usually think of this as a refugee card. It's somebody that had to be uprooted against their will from their place of familiarity and safety and they have to venture off into a new land. And usually this indicates as well um, people of different nationalities, interracial dating, people of different cultures coming together and automatically, you know, whenever that happens, there's always going to be ideological differences, cultural differences, even cultural rifts and cultural divides that um, that can be very difficult to overcome. And if there are linguistic different differences or diff they're saying difficulties, but I'm hearing, um, well, it could be both. If there has been communication difficulties due to linguistic differences between the two of you, I feel like that's another issue that's kind of like, it, it's like another level of that lattice on top of the the existing problems in the relationship so you're dealing with someone who has um you know he or she has had to overcome a lot of trials and tribulations in their own life they are very self-made they don't sit around and whine and complain over things they just get things moving and i almost feel this need for someone who you're involved with they're constantly moving so that they don't have to process things so that they don't have to feel things because their emotions can be so overwhelming if they took the time to really you know see a therapist or to really vent it's like it would open up a floodgate of emotions and they're not really ready to do that so you're dealing with a partner who might be um, very broken very injured they're moving away from that 
they're they're sailing away from it and they're coming into calmer waters and they definitely feel there is a lot of safety uh, with you they definitely feel like there's safety there's a purpose and they're trying to build that permanence with you so rest assured that you're with someone that's not going to be leaving and you're with someone that finds the comfort and home in you and at the same time it's going to be a very slow process for this person to heal from whatever um, situation they've they they've had to contend with in their past and so, you know, they're, they're coming from a space where they might be a little bit downtrodden and broken. They're coming away from it. But I also feel like there's a very strong um, sense of protection that you are giving off towards this person. You know they've been through a lot. And you are also very um, maternal, paternally um, protective of them to the point where it might be patronizing, to the point where you are offering to do everything for them and not allowing them that freedom of movement or not allowing, not feeling like they're capable or competent enough to do it. You might do it, like um, it, it might be inadvertent from your end, but I feel like you're trying to control the situation, okay? I usually um, see this combination as like controlling elements seeping into the relationship. Um, one person might feel like it's healthy, but the other person I feel like feels like it's stifling. So be very careful about that. If that's your energy that you're bringing to the table, be careful in identifying that early on. If that's an energy that you feel coming from a prospective suitor or somebody, somebody that you're dealing with long term. The energy is very subtle, but it can be very um, toxic. In the long run if you're not careful okay if you don't nip it in the bud it's going to escalate so be careful about that um, I also feel as well others of you um, who are dealing with another person who's a lot more um, I want to say a lot more stable is looking for permanence is looking for um, kind of like home okay we have here the Queen of Wands and this is a fire sign Sagittarius Aries or Leo and it's also echoed in this card here this is the knight of wands okay somebody who is foreign to you so from a foreign land a foreign location a foreign country this is somebody that is a sagittarius an aries or a leo um sun moon or rising and what i feel um coming in with this card is this is somebody that's really 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 fun to be with okay they exude a lot of um, excitement, a lot of passion. There could also be a lot of chemistry between the two of you. And the energy is really, really strong. They get, they're very proactive. They get a lot of things done in their lives. They're kind of on top of this hill, like I've made it. I'm now scanning around for a suitable partner, but somebody needs to be on my level. Otherwise, I'm not gonna date them. So this is somebody who is quite picky. And if someone doesn't really, you know, they're on a hill, so they have a lot of prospects, right? They're looking at things from a bigger, larger vantage point or a higher vantage point. And I feel like they they see what you're about and they see they need you to kind of like walk up this hill and, and meet them halfway or they need to know that you're on their level in order for you to invest in them. And on your level doesn't mean material wealth. On your level doesn't mean um you know uh, professional like achievements it basically means wanting the same things wanting adventure wanting expansion wanting to you know explore the world and look at the world as a playground rather than you know just going through the motions work and home and rather than looking at the world with a pessimistic um view i feel like they want an equal partner in fun and adventure and i feel like they're going to be a really good person to travel with they're a good person for you to expand your world view your consciousness with this is not somebody who is um, narrow-minded okay i feel like you know they have their preconceived notions like what the world is supposed to be but they also make a lot of allowances for other people they tolerate i am getting like a very tolerance a very um understanding a very maternal vibe with this person where they care about people they care about humanitarian uh, ideals and goals and i feel like they connect to people 
uh, not as foreigners or like you're from this country, you're from that country, but they have this sense of collective consciousness where they see everybody as a human race and they don't have any prejudice, they don't have any um, narrow-mindedness or tunnel vision when they deal with other people and I feel like for them there's also this innocent trustworthy and trusting energy that they bring to the table where they don't really believe anyone is out to hurt other people so you might think it's naivety but I feel like it's more giving everyone the benefit of the doubt so you have someone that is really um, it's like providing a breath of fresh air in your life in a fresh perspective and because of that I almost feel like they're really exciting to be around and I feel that you are trying to build wealth with this person okay I have here the ten of pentacles this is an escalation in the um, relationship um, the way that this card is depicted it's almost like castle in the clouds right castle in the clouds dreaming and conjuring up you know this ideal family um, image you know this this sort of like a, a grand match between two people where the two people have the same educational uh, level of attainment if for example you have a PhD they have a PhD if you have a master's they have a master's if you have a law degree they might be um, if you're a lawyer they might be a doctor it's it's somebody who's very very similar in professional achievements educational achievements someone who is a really really good match and for those of you who are in arranged marriages I feel like your parents or whoever is setting you up might have somebody in mind for you who is a really really good match so a, a really suitable match for you not just materially and professionally but also a very good match for you on a spiritual level and that will really allow you to grow and have a really fun relationship as well as a stable suitable relationship um, you know um, when I look at this card I think about royalties and how back in the days um, people kind of like marry it's like a political marriage but I feel like with this card and with the energies that it's wedged in between you're meeting somebody that is a really good match for you and I feel like there there is this nesting instinct that's gonna come naturally to the two of you okay nesting instincts uh, people assuming their their uh, specified gender roles so even for uh, same-sex couples it's almost like one person will step up and assume the feminine role the other person will automatically then re um, assume the masculine role so whatever that means to you in every relationship even same-sex uh, relationships we kind of need to embody the yin and yang energy in order for the energy to flow well and I feel like th there's this natural affinity that you have with another person where one person embodies the yin energy and the other person that yang energy and so things will um, move along very very smoothly and as a result of that we're going back to the first card this is about you know relinquishing control this is about allowing your partner the freedom and also the opportunity to step up and you know take control of situation or also allowing you know the 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 natural flow of who's in control and who's relinquishing just allowing that to naturally um, calibrate between you and another partner rather than forcing a connection rather than you know having it a specific way I do feel for many of you in relationships uh, you are at a point where you are trying to you know your nesting instincts are trying to are kicking in you are trying to build something with a relationship partner so you might be um, conscious or you know a lot more aware about your spending which is a good thing um, you are a lot more conscious about saving up you are a lot more conscious about you know taking care of your relationship partner wanting to purchase a property wanting to buy a house wanting to buy a car wanting to you know save up for the children's um, college fund so you're doing practical things to sort out and balance out your resources just so that you can pass some things along pass down a legacy pass down an inheritance and leave something of lasting value to your children because somebody is triggering this nesting instinct within you in other areas of your life I do have a spiritual advice that's coming into the picture for you 
And um, I feel like for some of you, and I know it's it's supposed to be you know spiritual advice, but I'm seeing it here, so I'm just gonna say it. I feel like you have uh, an ex that's still haunting you, for some of you, and you have moved away from it. But I feel like you can't be rid of them. That's what it feels like to me. They're either um, relentless, like they won't let go of the connection, or you're not being clear enough. And this is something you. I have mentioned before many, many times for Cancerian people, um, especially the men, especially the Cancerian men, um, you're really nice people. And a lot of the times you send, you know, confusing messages to the people that you're interacting with and um, take a, a page out of the, um, I want to say, what sign is very, very final? Capricorn <laughs> take a page out of the Capricorn playbook when it comes to you know exes and relationships okay uh, when they're done they go silent they don't they they don't even need to entertain that person when they're done Capricorns are done they're they're just they will ghost you and you will never ever know you know did did the Capricorn person die are they okay how could they not respond to me well it's because they're very final and also, it's because they also, I, and I feel like this is their uh, incentive or, or their, you know, rationale for doing what they do. It's because they don't want to open up that door of communication and have you confused. Or they don't want to, you know, uh, lead the other person on. So I feel like with Capricorns, when it's done, it's really done. They close the door for good and they move on and you you won't hear anything from them. And I feel like with you, Cancers, I feel like it's very difficult for you to do that. And um, you might chalk it up to playing nice and being nice and being courteous. But what it does is that it creates hope from the other side, from the other person that, oh, they're still talking to me. They might want me back, maybe not now, but one day. So I'll keep knocking at that door. And that's not fair to the person that you're dealing with. And I feel like you have an ex here that's a little bit ruthless and a little bit relentless and a little bit like um, someone who tries to keep coming back. And I feel like you need to be very firm and you need to, you know, out of respect for your current relationship right now, you need to be very, very firm about setting your boundaries with exes, okay? And the reason I say exes here, we have the death card. You moving on. You've already decided you're going to move on. You've already physically, emotionally, mentally moved on. And somebody's coming knocking. Someone who still uh, carries a torch for you. Someone who, who might have had like a very passionate one night stand, fling, relationship even, marriage with you, and they're relentless, they're pursuing you, and they don't even have to be a fire sign, I just feel their energy floating around you, and I feel like, you know, first you were stuck in limbo, waiting on this person, waiting for things to get better, you've moved on on your own, you've moved on, and I feel like you might have been waiting for them while they were going around, you know, trying to find themselves and quote unquote on that. It's like trying to find themselves, trying, they, they were like too selfish to be in a relationship. They were just like not taking you seriously while you spent a lot of time waiting around for them. And then, you know, they choose to come back and give you communication whenever they felt like it with this eight of wands here. This is swift, fast communication, travel movements and, and whatnot. And I feel like, you know, when the communication was not responded in the manner that they hope they come out and they they physically show themselves in 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 real time, like showing themselves and you know, you you've tried to move on. So it seems like there are some lingering energies with X's and things like that and you kinda need to let go. And I see like many of you, you don't have a choice. You're letting it go because it's really interfering with your current relationship and you're trying so hard to build that up and to maintain that. And good for you for realizing and recognizing that. Because I feel like the, the ex keeps knocking on your door and you can't send out mixed signals, okay? It's it's very um, counterproductive and energetically, it's just, um, it's not a, a wise move for you and for the other person. So lay it to rest. 
Um, other things that I am picking up from this spread here, um, I feel almost like for many of you, there is major, major contemplations about trying to get your life in order, trying to, you know, get rid of bad habits, trying to reorganize your life and trying to get yourself in a space where you can be proud of your achievements, where you can get things moving for yourself. So I almost feel like this fire lit up under you where you're like, okay, I need to get things done. I've been stalling. People have been stalling me or I've been stalling. I've been kind of like on the sidelines of life, just hanging around. And, you know, there are so many things, so many dreams and aspirations and, you know, things that I want to do, things that I want to achieve, but I've just been dangling here for quite some time. And then life, before you know it, passes you by, right? And it's sort of like, you know, how if you, you've been like this, right? And then you get yourself out of this situation and you turn yourself upright, you have this, this massive head rush, right? Like it, it just feels otherworldly. So I feel like that, that's the, the, the head rush. It's when all the information, all the realization, all the revelations coming to you all at once, and it can feel somewhat painful, somewhat disorienting, and somewhat like time is running out. I need to get things moving. I need to get things started. And I feel like this week is all about continuing what you are doing, but doing it with a sense of urgency. And then I also feel like something is, is lighting a fire under you. And you're like, I need to achieve. I need to get out. I need to branch out. I need to get moving. So with this swift moving card, this is the rocket here. And I feel like, you know, you're trying to get a lot of things finished, a lot of things wrapped up, a lot of things moving from your end. And um, I keep seeing oxygen deprivation, like um, for some reason with the hangman and also with this card. So um, if you are a heavy smoker, okay, if you are a heavy smoker, I feel like you're going to uh, try to wean yourself away from it, which is going to be great. And then if you whatever you partake in and it it involves you know oxygen deprivation um try to wean yourself away from that because i feel like a lot of the times you know we need we need all the oxygen to our brain so that we can make clear decisions so that we can you know think clearly think quickly and be able to kind of systematically um process information so i feel like Maybe taking that element, smoking and whatever, away from your life is really going to help dramatically. It's going to uh, lift that mental fog, that, that sense of fatigue that you've been feeling. And it, it might help with concentration. It might help with a lot of things. You never know. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I feel like you're trying to make a lot of changes in your life. The process is slow and it has been stalled i feel because of your unwillingness to change and to kind of like get moving um but i feel like coming in for this week you are very determined and you're going to be successful when you are determined so whatever small steps that you need to take start it because those are like the 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 first few steps that you need to take in the right direction so you know it's never too late just small steps okay and don't push yourself don't don't um beat yourself over it uh over like not being able to make the big steps just yet um for those of you who have recuperated from like uh, surgeries or even like accidents and things like that small steps okay small steps and steady progress is going to be your friend all right um i'm going to leave it at that and cancers take care of yourself okay i'll be back next week bye bye